this potential diagram of a complicated field illustrates another aspect of the uh, interplay between field and potential. And that is first, let's first write, remind ourselves then, delta V equals, what is this? Okay, the integral of E dot ds. So we know that's true. We've done that to death. Now, to this, I'm going to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Fundamental theorem of calculus. When you take calculus, you may learn basically how to do an integral, right? Area under the curve, it's very intuitive. But of course, the mathematicians have a way to turn it into a bunch of laws and axioms and corollaries that don't make any sense, right? You could write 10 pages on the fundamental theorem of calculus. It actually says many things. One thing it says, though, very clearly, is that doing an integral is kind of like doing a derivative backwards, that they're the opposite of each other. One thing the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if this function is the integral of this function, then this function is the derivative of that function. Taking an integral, taking a derivative are like inverse processes of each other. In fact, integrals are sometimes called antiderivatives. Okay? So what that tells us is you can get E from the potential. You can get the field from the potential. And it looks something like this. In one dimension, E, we don't worry about the vector if it's in one dimension, E is minus dV dx, what I just said. If the V is the integral of E, then E is the derivative of V. And the minus sign is just along for the right. right so that's in 1D. Um, if you want to do the full 3D vector calculus version in Cartesian coordinates, it would look like this, and this may kind of make sense to you, minus the derivative of V in the X direction, that's the X component, uh, minus the derivative of V in the Y direction, that's the J component, and minus the derivative of the field V in the Z direction, that's the K component. And you may notice I'm kind of styling on my derivatives now, like they're missing a stem. Did I just kind of lose it, or did I get lazy? Well, that's actually a, this is a different kind of derivative. When you do derivatives in more than one dimension, you start to use something called partial derivatives sometimes. But we don't care that much about the vector calc. Right now, we don't have to really worry about that, but there's a region. These are not Ds. These are Ds. Okay, it's a special kind of a D we use for partial derivatives. But it is basically the same idea that if it's integral this way, it's derivative the other way. So from here, we can actually see it a little bit. I attempted to draw it that way, is what would be dv dx? That's basically telling me how often to draw the line, OK? So if I'm drawing these lines such that they're evenly spaced in energy, which I did, 10 volts, 9 volts, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, they're spaced by 1 volt, then the separation I put between them is basically the derivative. It's the change in voltage divided by the change in distance. Right? It's one volt per a big distance here, that's small. It's one volt over a small distance here, that's big. And that's supposed to represent that dv dx, how big the field is. There's a negative sign, but don't worry about that. Okay? So here, where the field is small, and you can see from the vector flux, the field is small, right? Because over a big, where these four field lines are doing a big area, I have a big spacing between my field, my equipotential surfaces. A big spacing means for one volt, I have a big dx, so it's small. Right? So low vector flux, big equipotential spacing. And then here, where the field gets big, you know, we have a higher vector flux. Uh, we have a, a lot of field going through this uh, area. Then I made the spacing smaller. And then when the field gets weak again, I made the spacing bigger. So equipotential lines should, should do that. If we draw them around a sphere, we know that the field gets lower as you go away from the sphere. So really, if you did equipotential lines that are at constant spacing, they would be close when you're close to the sphere, and they would get farther and farther away as you go farther and farther away from the sphere. So that's also something you can use to visualize fields. If we show you a diagram and say the potential is sloping up here, and then it's constant, it's sloping down. You can start to think about what is the field doing? If it's sloping up, the field is pointing back, right? Because of the negative sign. We'll probably do some problems like that in the homework. 